Hey guys, how's it going? Zach Butler YGO here. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to uh, give a warning that my voice is going to sound a little raspy and hoarse. I have been coughing profusely the last few days due to my allergies, you know, sneezing, things like that. Um, and of course it happens right before the YCS. And so I just wanted to apologize and give you guys that warning that I might sound a little off, but I wanted to make sure that this video got out to you before the end of the day Wednesday anyway. Uh, I had posted a poll two days ago at this time asking what content you guys wanted to see first, and the clear winner was the math behind deck building. Now, a lot of people know that I always preach about making your deck as mathematically consistent as possible, but it might be a little confusing to do the math yourself if you're not aware of how to do it, or if you just hear me mention numbers and you're like, okay, but how did you get there? So I actually wanted to go over that with you today, um, because if you can make your deck mathematically more consistent, then you're better. Uh, you have a better chance of actually being able to make a strong deck. Uh, you know, there are players like Jesse Cotton, for example, who always preach the importance of making your deck mathematically consistent and using. Uh, rational thought and logic behind your card choices and today we're going to actually go over a little bit of the math uh, i'll show you the calculator that i use and then we'll go over 10 different numbers that'll make you a better duelist um so first things first is if you actually just want to know the website it's deculator.appspot.com and i will link this in the description below this website is fantastic another one you can use is um the hypergeometric calculator. This one is the same thing, it just has more information on it that you really probably don't care about. Um, but I, I tend to use the deculator one because it's just a more simplistic one when I'm showing people how to do this math. Uh, so that's the first thing is this is the website you'll want to use. And it's a very simplistic website. Um, and it even goes, it explains, you know, like the advanced features. So if you wanted to know, uh, for example, let's say this is actually, it was originally for uh, magic. Um, if you have mountains and forests and your combination e needs either two mountains or one mountain and one forest, you can describe this with two hand columns. So as you can see, you can actually do that and you can figure out how many you need for that. Uh, I tend to stick with the simplistic one. So let's say you wanted to uh, do the math on normal summons. Uh, you know, we always talk about how uh, five normal summons is the magic number. Um, or five is the magic number in 40. And people hear that a lot and they don't necessarily understand why. So what you do here is you put in, in this case, we're just going to put normal summon instead of a card name. Uh, and, and in our deck, there's going to be five of them. And we want to know the odds of drawing one. Uh, and then there's null. Uh, these are just the these are cards that do not count for this. And then there's 35 in our deck because it's 40. And we don't need to know the odds of drawing any of the other cards. And we want to see how many we're going to draw in our first five cards. So then you hit calculate, and your chance to draw a combination of those in the first five cards is 50%. So that tells 50.7 percent so this is you have just over a 50 percent chance to draw a normal summon in your first five cards which okay so now you know that well what happens if you increase that to six you go to 57.7 percent okay so you you're going up a little bit more but let's say you want to know the difference so that's the difference between five and six is seven percent what's the difference between four and five it's eight percent so what that means is that that five is actually the point of diminishing returns and that tends to be the break point in deck building is you want to get the maximum number of a type of card before you get to the diminishing return where the odds of getting to that desirable outcome are less than the odds of getting to an undesirable outcome and the way you can tell that is the percentage to get to the desirable outcome still goes up because you are adding more of the desirable outcome, but it goes up by less and less each time. So that's just something to keep in mind. So let's say you wanted to know the odds of opening up with a Cash Tira starter, right? So this could be uh, 
uh, one of your three Theos, or one of your three unicorns, Fenrir's planets uh, are terraforming. So that's ten cards. So we will increase this to ten, and we'll de decrease this to thirty. And you just want to know the odds of drawing one of them. In your opening ten, your opening five cards is seventy-eight point three percent. So you have a seventy-eight. And I always round to the nearest whole percentage, so if it's below 5.5, you go, or if it's 0.5 or below, you go down, 0.6 and above, you go up. So it's actually a 78% chance to see one of those 10 cards in your opening hand. What that means is in about 8 out of 10 games, you should open up with a starter card. But then if you add Pot of Prosperity into it, which I would count as a starter card, um, then that puts you to 13. So we go to 27, and now you're at 87.7% or 88%. So in almost 9 out of 10 games, you're going to see one. If you can find a 14th starter, for example, that puts you to 90%, which means that in 9 out of 10 games, on average, you will see one of those cards. The reason why that's important is that means that in 9 out of 10 games, you're going to be able to reliably be able to play, which is really good. But let's say you want to know the odds of seeing a single card. Like, let's say a single copy of a powerful spell or powerful trap. Like, let's say you want to know the odds of seeing evenly matched in your opening hand when you go second. So we'll take this down to three. And this goes up to 37. And you're going to go, you're going second, so this goes up to six. <laughs> So that gives you a 39.4% chance or a 39% chance to see one in, to see one copy of evenly matched in your hand. That's really important because that means that more often than not you won't see it, but it's not a terribly large percentage. But if you want to know the odds of seeing a single copy of a card you played two of in your opening hand, or well, actually, we'll do we'll do a single copy of a card you play three of in your opening hand of five. Like let's say you want to know the opening, the percentage of opening up with. I'm trying to think of a deck here that might want a specific card. Like you wanted to know the the percentage to open up Sprite Blue. It's thirty three point eight percent, or we round that up to thirty four percent. So now you know the odds of opening up with a single copy of any card you play three of. So you can apply that to. Uh, to anything. So if you want to know the odds of opening up your Ash Blossom in your first five cards, or your Nibiru, or things like that, you can actually do the math on that. Um, and if you go second, it actually goes up to, like I said, to 39.4. But let's say you want to know the odds of a card you play two of. So we'll go back here, we'll reduce it to two, and we want to know the odds of drawing one of those two ofs in our opening five cards. Well, now you go to 24%, because we're going to round this up. So you went down by 10%. And this is actually a really important one, because I want to show you guys really quick the importance of that in the deck building. So let's, we're going to use a, a pretty common example here. Uh, let's say you opened up, this is actually a prime example of why Heart of Desires. I'll use this one. This is my personal favorite. So people don't like people didn't like to play three because they never wanted to draw desires off of desires, or you didn't want to draw two, etc. Uh, this can apply to any card that you play that you don't necessarily want to see two of. Well, you want to know how many there, what the, what the percentage of seeing two of that card in your opening hand is. Well, if you play three copies, you're, the odds of seeing two copies of that undesirable card in your opening hand is 3.6%. If we go over here, the odds of seeing two copies of a two of is 1.3%. So we round, this is 1%, this is 4%. So there's a 3% difference. But if you remember, the difference in seeing it at all is 34% versus 24%. So there's a 10% loss for a 3% gain. The 10% loss being that you'll see one in 10% less of your games. The 3% gain being that you'll brick on it 
effectively, you won't see a second copy in your hand in 3% more games. So if you take that 10% minus that 3%, you have a 7% loss in overall consistency. So you're actually making your deck worse. And that's just using Pot of Desires, which was at 3, as an example. This can apply to any card that people will, will say, I don't want to draw 2 of. Um, and it actually is really interesting to do that if you go 3 and you play 41 cards. So let's say you wanted to... I've seen this happen a lot where people will say they want to play 41 cards so they break on a card less. Well, you have 33% to open up that one of, that that one copy of Desires in your first five cards. Uh, versus uh, in 40 cards, 8%. So you only reduce your, you, you only reduce the chance of breaking by 1%. That one copy, or that one extra card, doesn't really do that much. But let's say you want to make sure you don't draw your Garnet, right? We're going to use Pot of Desires here as the example of a Garnet. So in 40 cards, you have 12.5% chance if you played one copy of Desires, so 13% to open up with it in 30, 30 card, or 40 cards. If you go up to 41 cards, and this is where the, the Garnet comes in, you go to 12%. So you still only have a 1% difference. So at that point, you're not actually making your deck more consistent. Now, this can be a difference maker, though. Let's say you play 13 starters in 40, well, you have a 70, or, so 13 starters in 40, you have an 87 or 88% chance, or 14 starters in 41. You go to, to, to 90%, so you actually still go, you, you, you make your deck more consistent. There are times when going above 40 is correct. Um, it is just about running the math. So let's say you want to know, I'm trying to think of a good example here. Uh, well, let's look at like the the worst case scenario, right? Like, let's say you play three pot of desires in your deck. You know, I always use three pot of desires as my example because that's my my go to card. And you want to know the odds of opening up with all three of that card, where you are just living your worst life. What are the percentage of that? It's 0.1 percent. You can actually run the math on all sorts of interesting combinations. Or let's say you wanted to know the odds of opening. Pot of Desires as a 2 of, and Pot of Prosperity as a 3 of, and you want to know the odds of drawing both in your opening hand. It's 6.8%. So now you know. In just under 7% of your games, so 7 out of 100, because the percentage you can just uh, then, you know, apply that to 100. In 7 out of 100 games, you should open up both of those together. So, odds aren't that high. So you might be wondering, like, well, what do we use this for? Well, if we take a look at... Let's... Let me give, give me one moment here. I really should have done this sooner. Let's go on to infinite.tcgplayer.com. Uh, we actually, just in case you weren't aware, we keep a record of, like, basically every event that we can. Um, if we look at these decks here from YCS Lima, the most previous, the, the previous YCS, the most recent one, you can actually scroll down and find any deck you want. So let's take, uh, for example, where is it? Jesse Cotton's Sprite deck, because Jesse's deck, I think, is a perfect example of this kind of math in action. So looking at his deck, we see, you know, it's Monster Spells and Traps, but if you want to know how much non-engine heat plays. Let's look. We have 3 Ash, 3 Eclipse, 3 Moon, 3 Lance, so that's 12, and then 2 evenly matched. Okay. Well, generally, you want to draw 2 of those cards, so we'll put uh, non-engine to help if I could spell. Uh, and there's 14. We want to see 2 of them, and engine. So there's 26 engine cards in his deck. And we want to know the odds of drawing two of those non-engine cards in in the first five. 58%. So that means in over half your games, you should see two of those non-engine cards in your opening five. Now, why is that important? Because if you increase that to, to 15, because, you know, maybe you want to see more. What is the 
what is the increase there? You go to 63%. So you go up by 5%. What about 16? 60, 68%. So you're still going up by 5%. But if you look at the difference between 13, which is 53%, and 14, which is 58%, it's still a 5% increase. So you're not gaining anything more off of that. But now, let's see the odds of drawing 3, which is 22%. But if we do that to 3 and 15, it goes up to 26. Uh, 31. 35. So you can see it continues to increase and actually you're drawing more non-engine. And this is important for deck building because, you know, you may want to know, like, well, if I want to see three non-engine cards, what's the ideal number to play? So you want to find the highest percentage. You want to try to get to that, like, 50%. And I believe it is actually 19, which takes you to 45%. Let's see, 20. 20 gives you a 50% chance to see three non-engine in your opening hand. Um... So let's, if you look at Jesse's deck, you can see there's 49 engine, there's the five pots, which then means that he'll see one in 50% of his hands. But look at his, let's like break down, if we had to look at like his deck as like starter cards, for example, well, what, what in this deck is a starter card? You have three Fenrir, three Unicorn, because those get you to everything, so that's six. Then you have uh, three Prosperity, because Prosperity is something you can definitely cl classify as a starter card. So that's nine. 10, 11, 12 with the Ritzoth, and 13 at Terraforming. So 13 starter cards. And as we saw earlier, that puts us at, I think it's 8 out of 9, or 8 out of 10 hands gets you one starter. I'm suddenly blanking on it. At 13 starter cards, he has an 88% chance to see one in his opening hand. So that's really good to know. But let's say you wanted to know, for example, the odds of seeing Theosis and Fenrir in your opening hand, right? This is just the last example I'll give really quick. You want to know the odds of opening up Fenrir, Theosis, and then whatever else? 10%. You have 10% to open up with two, co two, with one copy each of two different three ofs in your deck. So when you're deck building and you're looking at the combinations of cards, you can actually math out the percentages of seeing these kinds of cards together. And you can do that with any deck. Let's take the Branded Despia deck. You want to know how often you're going to basically open up with Branded Fusion, right? Well, if you know that they have a 34% chance of opening up with your, their Ash Blossom, then you want to make sure that you have multiple plays and you want to make sure that your deck is as cons consistent as possible to play through that um but so let's just count how many effective copies of branded fusion we have so in this case a luber counts as branded fusion because it can get us to branded fusion so that's three and then we have the uh three branded opening because that can get us to looper which can get us to branded fusion so that's six we have the three branded fusion as well, so that's nine. So you have nine copies of branded fusion. So you have nine copies in your opening hand. And let's say you want to know the odds of opening up with one of those and a lost. 7.1%. So in 7% of games, you should open up with one of your nine branded fusions effectively and branded lost. And there's all sorts of like little niche things you can do with this. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. I'm sorry if this didn't really make the most sense. Um, I'll also make sure to link this article here. Uh, this is basically just a video form of my old article on, on numbers that make you a better duelist. Uh, for example, uh, you know, if you want to see like your hand traps, um, here's, here's a really good basic bit of math here. Um, you have 51% to see one of five cards, 58% to see one of six cards, 64 to see one of seven, 69, <laughs> nice to see one of eight, and 74 to see one of nine. So you can also apply those, though, to, like, cards like Cyanide Mining and, um, 
Gazelle in this case. This was written in 2020, so of course it's going to be the example. But if we were to apply that same kind of math to, let's go to event decks, to uh, let's use Natria Runic here. Uh, if you wanted to know the percentage of opening up with three of your runic spells, right, in 40 cards that aren't the field spell. You have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So then you go over here and you go desirable. You can actually just put NA here because this won't really matter. Put this to 0, 0 and it won't affect it at all. And you want to know the odds. Let's say you want to know the odds of opening up with three of those runic spells. I think there is 18, 19. Let me double check. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So if you want to know the odds of seeing three of those spells and you're opening five cards and you play 18, 40.2% or 40%. So in two out of five games. Or, you know, just under half, uh, you'll see three spells. If you reduce that to two, it goes up to 76%. So in three out of four games, you will actually see two runic spells in your opening hand. And that's really important with deck building because you want to make sure that your combos and your your combinations of cards and your 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 lines and things like that are as consistent as they can be when you're building your deck. Um, if I didn't do a very good job of explaining it right now, I'm sorry. I'll definitely be doing an update video on this later on. Um, I will link this article in the description below. I will also be happy to answer any questions I can on this. Uh, and I'll make sure to link the deculator as well. Uh, until next time, guys, have a wonderful day. And if you want to purchase any cards from the decks that we talked about in here, or just in general, make sure to use the affiliate link in the description below. And please, if you made it this far, let me know by giving this a like, a comment, and a subscribe. That helps me out a ton, and it would mean the world to me because we're getting close to 800, and once we get to 1,000, we have a giveaway coming up. Until next time, guys, though, have a wonderful day.